Hello and welcome to this History Masterclass for students uh, completing the internal assessment for IB History and that's for students sitting um, the new IB from 2017 onwards. Uh, my name is Daniel Guiney and I'm going to talk you through uh, how you can do well in this very important assessment. So the internal assessment is a project of your own choosing. Uh, that makes it special and exciting. So you choose a question about a topic uh, that's of interest to you. It might be something you've studied before. It might be something completely new, uh, but it is special and exciting. But please be aware there is a 10-year rule that the IB sets. So you can't choose any historic event that's taken place in the last 10 years. Um, so like I say, it can be something on the syllabus, something you've studied previously or you've got an outside interest in. Uh, it might be something to do with your national history. These are often the best ones, uh, especially if you um, can speak more than one language so you can access lots of different sources. Uh, but above all, choose something you love and be innovative. Again, I really enjoy reading IAs. Uh, that are about subjects that are maybe a little bit um, less popular uh, and a bit uh, a bit out there. Uh, you must be aiming high. Uh, the IA is different to all the essays you'll have done for papers one, two, and three, and uh, it's a bit more like a report in some respects. So if you know how to jump through certain hoops and you're prepared to graft hard and get lots of drafts in to your teacher, you can do really great. The IA has a word limit of 2,200 words, and please be aware that beyond that uh, limit, nothing will be marked or credited, and so you should have a word count clearly on the front page. The IA is worth 25 marks in total, um, and the mark you are given has a weighting of 20% if you're high level and 25% if you're standard level. So it's uh, between a fifth and a quarter of your overall IB grade. That's why you need to really put a lot of thought and effort into it. It will be marked by your history teacher or history department, and then a selection of them will be externally moderated by the IBO. So where do we start? Well, first of all, you need a good question. So find your topic, something that interests you, uh, and please be aware the IB subject report states that for a good question, it should be about either causation, consequences, continuity, change, significance, and perspectives. Um, Russell Tarr, a fantastic history teacher at um, International School of Toulouse, came up with a really useful rubric, which I'm going to share on here, uh, which I've shown below. Um, to what extent, how useful, uh, how successful, significant was, are all good question starters. So you might want to use that grid um, uh, and to thank him for putting that in place to help you come up with a good question. And do make sure you talk your question through with your teacher. So everything hinges on a good question really. Um, if you choose a question um, that doesn't lend itself well to debate, then it's very hard for you to be analytical. So it's really important and really crucial you choose a good question. Uh, and also your question must be, must be small enough to deal with in 2,200 words. So why did World War II begin, I think, is too big a question to do justice in such a small document. But how significant was the demilitarization of the Rhineland might be a bit more manageable. And also it must be something you can research where you live. So, for example, my students live in China, um, so it's quite difficult to get your hands on certain sources. So think about what's available online and where you live Maybe you're going traveling somewhere um, that you can access museum or archives for. Uh, so think about your research too when formulating your question. So again, here are some uh, nice examples of IA questions. Was Truman right to drop the, bo right to drop the bomb on Nagasaki? Uh, to what extent was Saddam Hussein's background crucial in his rise to power? Um, to what extent is Cairo's 360 panorama an accurate version of the events of the Arab-Israeli war. These are all uh, IAs that have been done really well by previous students. And there's a few more examples here. So you might want to pause the video here, have a look at some of these, and they might help you frame your own question. Okay, so you'll have a front page uh, with the word count and your name clearly labeled on it. 
and you are going to start, once you've got your question, uh, finding research. I suggest you aim for a minimum of eight authoritative sources, so really good sources. Um, books are still best, and it's really crucial that for part A, you find two opposing sources which will be central to your overall argument. Um, you'll find lots of good stuff online. Uh, my students have subscriptions to Modern History Review and History Today. Um, your local library is always a fantastic place to visit. Um, perhaps you have a university library. Uh, Amazon uh, is great, um, uh, particularly if you've got a birthday or Christmas coming up. Uh, teaching History. Uh, JSTOR is a site I really recommend. I think you can get six free downloads per month. Um, and also Questia has some useful uh, stuff on it too. Uh, check out the um, galleries at the Punch website and the British Cartoon Archive. And there are hundreds of thousands of wonderful uh, videos at the British Pathé channel on YouTube. Uh, you can also uh, use things like Scribd. And like I say, if you're going home or on holiday, uh, you might want to tie in a museum visit, etc. And also, when you use Google, um, make sure you do an educational search and use quotation marks for full sentence searches. And absolutely never, ever, ever cite Wikipedia. So the sooner you begin your write-up, the better. I recommend you tackle each section separately and stick to the suggested word counts. Uh, your teacher will advise you but can't edit it and the IB suggests you spend about 20 hours on this project, although in reality you might spend a lot more. Uh, your teacher will be happy to meet you one-to-one, um, -one, um, but it's important you lead in that process. So email or chat to your teacher to fix times. Um, the IB says you can submit one draft and then one final IA and then nothing, so there will be no retractions or improvements allowed after that date agreed by your teacher. It's important you must confirm it is uniquely your own work and it will be processed through Turnitin. And there are three elements to the IA, source evaluation, the investigation itself, and your reflections. And we can see this on the rubric I've put together here. So again, you might want to pause this video at this stage and just have a look at the mark allocations for each of the three sections. Uh, please note also you are expected to include a bibliography, although you don't actually technically get given a mark for that. Okay, so the first section is part one, the identification and evaluation of sources. Uh, you should be spending about 500 words on this, and it's worth six marks. Address each source separately. So one source deserves one paragraph, and like I say, they should be sources hopefully, that disagree with each other. So for the top band, five or six marks, you must clearly state an appropriate question, identify the sources you're using, and explicitly explain their relevance to the investigation. You then provide a detailed analysis and evaluation of two sources with explicit reference to their origin, purpose, content, value, and limitations. OPCVL should be emboldened. Don't make your teacher or the examiners comb for it. Okay, now that sounds like quite a lot to get top banned. Uh, so let's look at a real example. Okay, you can see this student here has begun their part one by clearly stating the question. So this investigation examines the question, how far does the textbook extract swiftly taking Luding Bridge accurately record the statistics of the Luding Bridge incident? So straight away, going back to the mark scheme, you can see uh, there at the top, five or six, an appropriate question for the investigation has clearly been stated. They've then gone on to explain the significance and relevance of the sources. Uh, so the former describes the incident, and it will be argued is highly representative of the official uh, CCP view. The latter is highly revisionist on the other extreme uh, of the spectrum, suggesting the descriptions are largely unhistorical. These sources were selected for their polar perspectives on this debate. So it's explicitly explaining the significance and relevance of the sources. And it then goes on to give uh, clear values and limitations explicitly based on the origin and the purpose of the source. And again, you can see 
that they're highlighted and underlined and emboldened to make it really clear to the examiner. And they've given two values and two limitations. Okay, you can see the student here has used hinge terms such as noteworthy, especially, diminishes the validity of, um, substantial value. That's always a nice technique to make yourself get the six and not the five. Uh, another top tip is to give two values and two limitations. When you're looking at the origin of the source, uh, feel free to find out where the author works. They might be an academic who you can email. Uh, you can find that online. Um, sometimes people do get back in touch with you. Uh, and also look at what's happening in the world. So uh, look at the provenance or the date of the source and just get onto Google and find out what was happening. Is there anything politically or historically related that might have coloured that person's thinking or writing? Um, so if you make sure you've done all of those tips, you should be looking for top band for part A. And make sure you don't exceed 500 words. Okay, so we can see here an appropriate question was clearly stated. The student has identified and selected appropriate and relevant sources and made it really clear of why they're relevant. And there is detailed analysis and evaluation of the two sources uh, with explicit discussion of the value. Please be aware for this that one limitation that you're not allowed is to say that it's just an extract. And the IB says that because pretty much everything they give you will be an extract. And it's too easy a limitation to give. Okay, so you've completed your part A and had your teacher feedback. Uh, you should now be starting to think about probably the more difficult part of the investigation, which is the analysis. This should be about 1,300 words, and it's worth a great 15 marks. Um, it must be wholly analytical, and for top band above 13 marks, you must be giving a clear, coherent, and organized argument uh, there should be a brief introduction, four or so paragraphs, using topic sentences and precise historical detail. Your analysis will be well-developed and critical. Uh, you'll support your points with a healthy range of evidence from a broad range of sources, and you will evaluate different perspectives before arriving at maybe a 150-word conclusion. So again, it seems like an awful lot to fit in. Um, I'm not going to talk through a whole example here, but uh, when we look at technique, uh, this was one student who did very well. You can see that they evaluate, arguably, an already defeated Japan was the most prominent factor, which substantiates that the atomic bombs were dropped for diplomatic reasons. So they've given their judgment about this question, which was about uh, the dropping of the atomic bomb uh, on Nagasaki. They've given lots of analysis and connectives. Look at this, firstly and secondly. So two layers of analysis. Um, I love that phrase, uh, compelling evidence. Um, and again, just lots of hinge terms like moreover, strongly arguable, more substantially, additionally. This is not just a piece of uh, descriptive storytelling or a knowledge vomit, as I like to call it, but this is a really analytical uh, written response. They've clearly shown an awareness of different perspectives. They're talking about um, the historian Gar Alperovitz at the top there and Admiral Leahy um, contended uh, in the middle, um, although there could be a little bit more about historiography in there. And again, that will depend on the range of sources you're using um, and how many historians' opinions you can get your hands on. Uh, supporting material is precise. You can see here Japan's ancient uh, carrier tradition embedded by societal pr pressure and everything is accurately referenced um, in this case using the Harvard system of referencing. So aim for about 1300 words and a conclusion of about 150 words. Make sure every drop of writing is analytical and above all answer the question. So lots of the skills you will have learnt particularly for paper 2 and also paper three will be um, inherent in your second section answer. So again, just to remind ourselves of the mark scheme, 
for top band here, the investigation is clear, coherent, effectively organised. We suggest about four points or four paragraphs. It contains well-developed critical analysis, focused clearly on the stated question. Evidence comes from a range of sources uh, used effectively to support your arguments. And there is evaluation, not just knowledge of, but evaluation of different perspectives. Uh, and it will argue to a reasoned conclusion that is consistent with the evidence and argument provided. Okay, the final part of uh, your marked IA is your reflection. should only be about 400 words. It's worth four marks. Uh, and in this section, you will reflect on your methods and challenges. Archives, sources, bias, selection, whose history, significance, criteria, objectivity, your own, others, terminology, um, how methods differ to the sciences and the maths, what is proof, all of those issues. And for top band, three to four marks, you must clearly focus on the methods you've used in your IA, show a clear awareness of both limitations and challenges, and make explicit, so really clear, the connection to your investigation. So it's not just about your personal involvement, but about the methods and challenges you've used as an historian in your IA. So here are some examples of questions the IB gives to help focus you on this section. Uh, what methods did you use? What did you learn about their limitations? What challenges face historians and how do they differ from other disciplines? Uh, did you have any issues with archive-based archive history? Um, how can the reliability of sources be evaluated? What's the difference between bias and selection? What constitutes an historical event? Who decides which events are significant? Is it possible to be unbiased? What's the role of the historian? Uh, should terms such as atrocity be used when writing about history or should value judgments be avoided? Uh, and if it is difficult to establish proof in history, does that mean all versions are equally acceptable? So again, you might wish to pause and think about these questions in light of your own IA topic. So again, here's a real example. You can see this student is clearly focused on methods. So... To neutralize this personal bias, it was important to use reliable evidence by searching about origins and values of sources. And then furthermore, um, I was able to learn what the core of historical investigation is. The challenges facing historians differ from challenges faced by other experts, such as, and so on. So the focus is on methods. They've shown clear awareness of limitations and challenges. However, finding North Korean sources was difficult. Yeah, I'm sure it would be, uh, because they block South Korean viewers from accessing their sites and so on. So uh, clear awareness of limitations and challenges. And there is an explicit connection made to the investigation. Uh, you can see here uh, the major challenge of the investigation was personal bias. I am South Korean, writing about North Korea. Okay, so it's very explicit um, what they, their personal involvement is in their reflection. So as I say, try and keep this section to about 400 words. Uh, read through the questions asked by the IB and keep coming back to this mark scheme so you can see top band, the reflection is clearly focused on what the investigation highlighted to the student about the methods used by the historian. Uh, it, it demonstrates clear awareness of challenges facing the historian and limitations. Uh, there is a clear and explicit connection between the reflection and the rest of the investigation. Okay, now... We said you don't actually get marks for the bibliography as such, but you are required to include one. Um, so a note on referencing, first of all, any and all lifted material or thoughts must be clearly referenced. And it's much better to oversight than undersight. So do it as you go along. Life is much easier this way. Um, and there's no single accepted method of referencing for the IA. The only thing they say is it must be consistent. You must use the same type of referencing throughout. And examples include Harvard, Chicago, MLA, etc. Uh, now, for my students, if two of you choose a very similar topic, um, I'm going to issue the topic on a first-come, first-served basis. So choose a great question and get your draft in early. So here's an example of a bibliography. Uh, you might want to break it down to subsections, so digital resources, um, textual resources, articles, internet resources, 
Um, or if it's if it lends itself to it, maybe um, primary or secondary sources or English or non-English sources. Uh, but remember, books are still best. And try and be creative in your sources. I've had students interview um, survivors in the past um, and put um, transcripts of their testimony in. Uh, so always try and include creative breadth of sources. Okay, uh, I wish you luck with your IA. Good luck.